What's up everybody, it's Paykel with League of Items and in today's video we are going to discuss MSI 2022, we're going to talk about the different teams that are going to be there, some of my thoughts about those teams, some things that we should remember from previous tournaments um, on those teams, take a look at all the rosters, compare the teams to one another, do some team rankings, all that good stuff, but before I do that, um, I have to victory lap on Evil Geniuses. So on broadcast, there were a lot of, um, you know, the analysts were saying, oh, you know, who could have thought that Evil Geniuses would have been able to win the spring split, you know, coming out, not coming out of nowhere, but, you know, it's just so surprising. And I've been making videos about Evil Geniuses being this good um, since January and February. Um, so I'm just going to go through some of the videos that I've made <laughs> uh because it's it's part victory lapping, but it's also like the the league scene is such an echo chamber. People think that the only people that have opinions are the ones that are um, like on the broadcast. But in reality, there are a lot of people outside of that who understand this probably better than they do in terms of evaluating talent and trying to figure out from a betting perspective which teams are more likely to win, which moves will result in more winning and stuff like that. Um, so on January 29th, this was what my tier list kind of looked like. And I know that not everything played out the way that I thought it might, but that's really not the takeaway that you should have. The, the thing is what opinions did I have that were actionable for the future? Um, some of them were in line with market. Some of them were not in line with market. So with evil geniuses, my belief in evil geniuses and my willingness to bet money on evil geniuses to win the split is something that, you know, that was a chance I was willing to take because my opinion of Evil Geniuses was so far out of line with the market. You don't need to make a bet for every single thing that you think, but when you think something that's way out of line with market, those are the, t the best times to take a chance, and if it doesn't hit, it doesn't hit. You just kind of have to live with it. But looking at this, January 29th, I had Evil Geniuses and Rogue as two of my top three teams, and they were both in the finals. Vitality crashed out of playoffs. They didn't perform very well. Um, and that's, that's just kind of, you know, where we were. If you look at the teams in the LCS that were up there, Evil Geniuses, Team Liquid, 100 Thieves, Cloud9, those were the four final teams. TSM, uh, didn't play well. Um, then I made a video, you know, five days later after lock-in, I think this was after lock-in, where I was trying to place Evil Geniuses in every region across the world. And, you know, some of them were pretty surprising, but I was already doing these thought experiments months ago where I was trying to think to myself, you know, if Evil Geniuses are as good as I think they are, how will they compete against these teams around the world? Um, and then the last video that I made, which I, you know, that was post haircut, so I do look very similar. That's probably an Inception situation right there. Um, I made a video about how Evil Geniuses could beat Team Liquid, what their draft strategy should be, and you know, it was pretty spot on. Um, it's It didn't play out exactly the way that I thought it would. Oh, you're seeing the wrong part of the screen. Uh, basically, that was like, you know, Volley, RETF, LeBlanc, Zeri, Rise. And I kind of, I had an idea of how these teams would prioritize the different champions and stuff. So, you know, that's where I'm coming from. I know that um, you're not going to agree with everything that I say in this video, but, you know, I'm not just saying this stuff to say it. I really do believe um, in what I'm saying. Um, so, so let's get into MSI. So before we start discussing numbers, I think the best thing for you to do to kind of see how your opinions relate to the market is take the 11 teams, I'm gonna list them right now, and then ask yourself, what percentage of the time do I think this team actually wins MSI? So we have T1, RNG, G2, Evil Geniuses, PSG, Wildcats, Detonation Focus Me, Saigon, A's, Red Canids, and Order, right? So what percent of the time do you think T1 wins 
um, MSI, and you know we can we can go through and discuss it. Um, but basically, this is what the sports book has. That's not the right one. This is what the sports book has. So, the sports book thinks that T1 will win. Uh, 63.64% of the time, and that seems like a pretty high number to me, and we're going to go through the numbers and why they look this way, um, and what, what this kind of implies. Um, RNG at plus 150 is a 40% chance to win, so they're saying the top two teams have over 100% chance to win, and that's because they're it's a betting market, and they understand that those are the teams that will get the most action, so they're trying to balance the books. I got Evil Geniuses at plus 4,000, and they're at 2,500 right now, so that, that was instantly bet down. Um, and you know, what's going to happen is when we get to like the semifinals, if evil geniuses are in the semifinals, I will most likely be offered money to cash out my bet, which is a, an okay position for me to be in at that point in time. But I really do believe in evil geniuses. I think they have a, a better than 3.85% chance to win G2 plus 1200, 7.69% chance to win evil geniuses, 2500, 3.85% chance to win. PSG 6,600, 1.5% chance to win, and then everyone else is less than 1%. Um, so before we go into everything else, let's talk about the teams. So Order, Canids, Team A's, uh, Saigon, I don't have any interest in those teams. I don't think that they're going to win the tournament. I don't know enough about those teams to even say something um, insightful about them. I'm not going to waste your time on those teams. Um, not because... There might be information that's out there that, that says you should consider playing one of these teams. I don't know what that is, so I won't do it. Um, so let's talk about Detonation Focus Me. So Detona Detonation Focus Me um, played okay at MSI last year, and then I knew that they were going to do well in the playing stage at Worlds because the level of competition wasn't going to be very high. Um, so we made a lot of money on Detonation Focus Me um, at the World Championships during the playing stage. But, you know... They, they played well in the play-ins. They got slapped on the main, the main stage. They're a very old team overall, and their new mid laner would need to be Faker in order for um, for this team to win this competition. Um, Aria um, is a good mid laner. He, he's in the LCK now. He didn't have a great split, but his team underperformed in general, and I don't really think it's all his fault. Um, I don't expect that Nation Focus Me to do anything here. They are the second most likely... They are the the they are the second best team in Group A according to the sports book, um, and their chance to make it out of that group is six point six seven percent chance, or no, their their likely their their odds to win the group is six point six seven percent. So it's a double round robin. I don't expect them to beat T one, and those odds probably aren't even good enough for me to want to do that. Um, actually, they they actually might be. I shouldn't say that. They would have to beat T. It's a double round robin. They would have to go like probably. One, two and zero, oh, or one and one against T one, and then hope that T one drops a game to somebody else, and detonation focus me just sweeps. You know, I don't know. That doesn't seem like something I'm going to bet on personally. Um, next up, uh, Wildcats. So Wildcats are from Turkey. Uh, they are a team. Let's get them up on the screen, actually. So the Istanbul Wildcats. So they made it to MSI. They made it to MSI last year, and I'm pretty sure that they just... Yeah, they got stomped at MSI. Their team has been around um, for a long time. We've seen them at different international competitions. Galatasaray is the other team that's pretty popular um, from that area. And then we have... Um, what was the other league? I forget what the other league was. Or the other teams from their league. Because they, they always have... Um, they always have somewhat competitive teams going to international events. Um, I don't really believe in them. Um, I don't think that they're that good. Galatasaray wasn't that good either. Uh, so I don't expect anything from them. I'm not going to spend any more time on them. And now we're going to talk about the five teams that I think are the mo they are the most likely to make it to semis or further. So first up, we have PSG. Uh, Hanabi, Juhan, Bay, uh, Unified, and Kai Wing. So this team is the one that we saw at MSI and Worlds last year. They went from River and Maple to Juhan and Bay. I don't know a lot about those players, but just looking at the their um, champions that they play, I don't think they're much different. I don't know if they have a much higher um, upside than those two players, but they're replacing two pretty good players. 
Uh, River came in and immediately made an impact on um, Dignitas. They it didn't they couldn't sustain it long term. Um, at Worlds, they beat Fnatic 2-0, but but uh, Fnatic didn't have upset. So they went 3-3 three and three with two wins against a bad Fnatic team. They just didn't play very well at the main stage, um, and they advanced. Um, they didn't advance into the, the knockout round. Um, personally, I expect PSG to be overrated in general at MSI, so we're going to look. Um, this video isn't going to go into specific matchups, but we will be looking to bet against PSG in the group stage, I think, because they have to play against... Um, the team from Turkey and the team from Brazil. So I will actually want to take a chance um, at one of those teams beating PSG, I think. In terms of how I rank these players, I think that they are the fourth or fifth best at their position out of these top five teams. So Hanabi, we've seen him before. Um, he's an he's an okay player, but he's not a he's not a big difference maker. Like if it, if it's a best of five, I don't really expect him to carry a match it's possible it's just not the likely thing to do juhan and bay i don't know anything about them um i i would expect them to be probably the worst out of all five of these players when you're when you have players like um owner way yankos inspired it's unlikely that juhan is going to be better than any of them um bay same thing unified and kai wing uh the same thing and the only reason why they're not definitive definitively in last place is because of the uncertainty surrounding some of the other players um, so let's talk about Evil Geniuses. Obviously, I'm very high on Evil Geniuses. This is where I expected them to be, so I am not over-adjusting because of what has just happened. Um, this is a, this is my long-term view of Evil Geniuses. So with Impact, I think that Impact is definitely a player that you can expect to perform well at an international event. He doesn't need to go out and carry every single game. He just needs to play his matchups good well enough to get the carries of the team into a spot to win. And he has shown time and again that he can do that. Um, so I think that he's probably the third best top laner. And I'll go through that again at once I'm done talking about all these teams. Inspired, this is probably where I'm the most different relative to the market. I think that Inspired is, I think that he's the second best jungler at MSI. And I think that he might be the best jungler at MSI. And that's a very unpopular opinion because everyone thinks that owner is just so good. I think that owner's probably getting to the point that he's overrated. I made a comment on on Twitter the other day, and then somebody came back at me saying that I didn't like that my opinions on the LCK and the LPL were wrong because because they said T1 looked strong at Worlds last year, um, but the the picture that they were referencing was you know Gen G, and then the tier below them was T1 and Dom1. And if you think about the roster moves that those three teams made over last season. I didn't expect T1 to be better than they were last year. And, you know, we will see if they are able to sustain the success. This could just be a little bit of a variant result um, where losing Kana and going to Zeus is not an upgrade. Kana is a better player than Zeus, um, period. That's just my that's just my view on things. Um, and then owner, owner, Faker, Gumiusi, and Karia all stayed the same except now owner is the only jungler as opposed to splitting time with other people. Um, Gen G upgraded their jungle and mid laner. Um, th now they have Chovy and Peanut. That's an upgrade from the players that they had previously, uh, BDD and Clid. So that, that made me feel even better about them. And in the right meta, they are going to be a team that can beat um, T1, at least be hyper competitive. And then we have Don Juan Gaming Damwon made a, a good move by swapping out uh, Ghost and Barrel. Um, they have Deoctam and Kellen, I think now, and I think that that's at no. It doesn't. It doesn't matter. I don't. I don't remember who their support is, but Deoctam is an upgrade over Ghost. Period. So the rest. The rest of the team kind of needs to figure it out. Birdall hasn't worked out great in the top lane, but now Nogri's coming back, so they should be. Um, they should be very good in summer, and everyone's going to give all of the credit to Nogri if that works, so it's kind of whatever. Um, but that was because I was talking about Inspired, so going to Jojo Pion. It's possible that at this point, Jojo Pion, the hope is that he can be competitive with 
Faker, Shaohu, and Caps. Not that he's going to win these matchups, but he's not going to lose them hard enough. They're, they're going to have to draft around that and get JoJo into good matchups, um, which is going to be a huge uh, draft restriction, especially with his champion pool looking the way that it has, where it's somewhat predictable. Um, but, you know, if the other teams are hyper-focused on Danny, maybe that gives Jojo Pyun some additional um, room to breathe and, like, opportunities to express himself. Because I, the only outcome that I would not want to see from Jojo at MSI is that he backs down from the challenge. I want him to be trying to make plays and playing out of his mind. Um, sometimes it'll work for him and sometimes it won't. But I want him to take those chances against um, RNG, T1, and G2. So, you know, the only way that that doesn't happen and the worst case scenario is that EG doesn't qualify. They're in the easiest group because there are only three teams. So if two random teams make it through, then they have a 66% chance. They're most likely much better than Order. Um, And I think they're better than G2. So Evil Geniuses, in my mind, is the most likely to win that group. And I got money on that as well. They were at like plus 250. Um, And then we're going to the bot lanes. Danny and Vulcan. So I think that Danny and Vulcan as a duo are the second or third best bot lane at MSI, and that's not going to be popular either, and that's fine. I think that Gumiusi and Karia are definitely the best, um, but Gala and Ming are overrated in my opinion, and they're still very good. I, I'm, I don't doubt that they're elite. Um, it, well, actually, I do doubt that they're in, elite, in an elite bot lane. Um, I think that Gala has... He eventually adapted to the meta that there was, playing more Felios and Jinx, but he is really much better when um, it's more like utility-focused AD carries, and we might be moving in that direction. So Gala might be better for this meta than Danny is, but Danny, in my mind, is just a better player at this point, and I know that's not popular, but Danny is that player. He, he just is, and the level of confidence that he has shown on stage and his ability to push forward in team fights against teams and players that everyone has been telling him are better than him, you know, that takes a lot. So I, I have a ton of respect for Danny and I think that the I think that he could theoretically be the kind of AD carry that allows North America to have somewhat of a chance to win um, an international competition like MSI or even Worlds. I know it's not likely. That's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying it's likely or probable i'm just saying that's the upside that i think danny brings um and then vulcan once you hit a certain level at support it's really tough to to uh distinguish distinguish yourself um but we know that vulcan is good enough um next up g2 i think that g2 is overrated now because of their run in the playoffs um and i think that eg is better than them in almost every single one of uh the posi- and I think that EG is better than G2 in almost every single position, and I think that Evil Geniuses are better than almost all of... Uh, they, I think that Evil Geniuses are better than all the teams that G2 played. And, you know, you could say, oh, well, Paykel, like, nobody thought that. Well, I just showed you a video from February where I ranked Evil Geniuses as the number one team in the West. Um, so, yes, I did think that. Um, so, Impact against Broken Blade, I think that you might want to make the argument that Broken Blade is a more variant player and is more likely to draft onto the winning side of a matchup, but I don't think that he's a better player than Impact. Um, Inspired is just better than Yonkos. That's not even debatable. If you think that Yonkos is better than Inspired, then you need to stop talking to me about League of Legends because we're not watching the same game. Um, I'm I'm definitely going to default to Caps is better than JoJo because Caps has a lot of international experience and is a very good player. I think there are a lot of matchups that JoJo... Um, could win a lane and could be more impactful in a game, but over a, a series, I think that Caps would um, ultimately get the best of Jojo Pyun um, at this point. Um, and then Flocket and Targamas against Danny and Vulcan. I think that Danny and Vulcan are just easily better than Flocket and Targamas. That would be shocking to me if that ended up not being the case. Um, so that's G2. RNG. RNG is a team that, you know, we loved it when it, it was Shaohu top lane. Um, and now they have Bin. I think that Bin is the best top laner at, at MSI. When he was on Sunning, he had a pentakill uh, in the finals, which is crazy. And like, yeah, it's better to win the win the finals and get a pentakill. But Bin was the first or second most important player on that team, probably. Um, so he has a ton of international experience um, f- 
from Worlds, and he's a very good player, very diverse style player. His best wa- his best way of playing the game is by being a carry top laner, and I think that Broken Blade and Impact could have problems with that if Bin has the champions that can punish um, their champion pools. And the same thing for Zeus. I think Zeus is overrated at this point, probably. But I still like him better than Broken Blade and Impact. Um, Wei, Wei had a bad playoffs, um, and his team still won because everyone else played really well. They He would constantly give up gold leads in the early game, so I think that's one place that teams could attack. Um, it's also possible that that was a fluke and Wei just plays better, but I wouldn't be surprised if they moved on from Wei next split or for next year. If they do think that Bin, Xiaohu, Galaming has the potential to win a world championship, I could see them swapping out the jungler. Um, Xiaohu, I think that Xiaohu's the, I think that Xiaohu's the best mid laner <laughs> at this tournament, and it's for, from the carry perspective. I think that Faker is the best player of all time. I'm not saying that Faker doesn't deserve a lot of respect and credit, but if it was, you know, one game, Xiaohu or Faker, who do I want to pick? I would probably take Xiaohu. Um, that's... That's just me. And, like, if you want to go, like, the intangibles route or, like, you know, Faker has so much experience, like, fine, I get that. I'm not... I think it's kind of splitting hairs. Um, it's just, for me, I would rather have Xiaohu. And I think that's part of the reason why they've been so good for so long. And he's so versatile. He's played top lane. He's played mid lane. Um, you know, just an, as a... It's crazy to say that, but I I just really do think that. Um Faker may have more influence, and he might. And the, the intangible thing is, is the the way that you easily get to Faker being um, more impactful overall. But just as a mid laner, I think I'd rather have Xiaohu. Gala, I think Gala is overrated. Uh, I've been saying that for a long time. Um, he is he is good enough to beat a lot of um, LPL eighty carries, um, and I think that if we see like. Gala playing Zaya against Danny playing um, Jinx or Aphelios. It's possible that Gala wins lane very hard. Um, and in that environment, his side is the one that's supposed to snowball. So, like, you might get these crazy games where Gala has, you know, 15 kills. Um, but it's really just the result of the draft and how the early game played out. Where, like, I would expect Evil Geniuses to just continuously try to force the issue and die and die and die and die and die, and die which is fine. Um, and then Ming has been great for a long time. And then we have T1. Uh, Zeus, I think, is the second best top laner. And he's more in the mold of Impact and Broken Blade, where he will carry if the draft calls for it, but he's most likely not going to be the focal point of a draft. Owner, if you want to say Owner is the best jungler here, then fine. But after Worlds, I don't think a lot of people would be would have said that. Um, in terms of like even in the LCK, like he's not the best jungler in the LCK. He he is not the best jungler in the world. Um, out of the teams that are at MSI, he might be the best. Um, Faker number two. You could easily put him number one. I'm not I'm not like trying to have like a hot take or anything, but that's just honestly how I wrote it down before I started the video. And then Gumiusi and Karia both number one. The one thing I would say about Gumiusi, like I think Karia is the best, and I think I've been saying that for multiple years. Um, with Gumiusi. Gumi Yusi, it's not that he was afraid of Berserker, but he was, like, um, inspired by Berserker to be better because he knew that Berserker was in, in the academy scene and he wanted to make sure that Berserker had no chance of taking a spot on the main roster. I think that you could make the argument that Danny is better than Berserker right now. Maybe Berserker ends up, you know, having a much higher ceiling and ends up being a great international AD carry that's still in the, ra- the range of possibilities. And he did look very good mechanically at different points in the season. Um, but I think that we're probably going to come away from this this tournament with, like, people having a very high opinion of Danny, even higher than they do now, which is crazy. Because if he is competitive against Gumiusi and Gala in the semifinals or finals or if they win, Danny is going to skyrocket to being one of the thought of as one of the best players in the West, if not the world. And it's a crazy thing to say, and it, it might not happen, and it it may be way too early for this, but within the next couple of years, if you told me that Danny is a top 580 carry in the world, me personally, I would not be shocked. Um, but I think it would shock a lot of people. Um, so let's move on from that. Let's talk about the chances to win the individual groups. So, you know, I, I use Bet365. Um, you have to go check these odds for yourself. 
T1 is at minus 5,000, 98% chance to make it out of their group. Seems like a pretty safe bet, but you know, do you feel comfortable betting $5,000 that T1 wins that group? I bet that's going to give you're going to ask yourself, um, you know, do I really want to bet $5,000 to win 100? The answer is probably no. Um, Detonation Focus Me plus 1400. You know, they have the, the name recognition. So if you have a good, if you have a high opinion of Saigon or A's, then you might want to take a shot on them. 1400, 2200, 3300. They're all 6% or less to win. Um, and it's very unlikely that they win. I think you're probably just lighting money on fire. Uh, group B, RNG, PSG, Wild, and Red. Again, I think that RNG is most like the most likely to win that group. Um, they did underperform last year at MSI, I think. Um, or no, they they they. I think they won MSI and then underperformed right when they came back. Yeah, to uh, the LPL. Um, but PSG, I think, is overrated. Nine um, percent is too high for them to win the group, probably. Actually, yeah. Yeah, I, I think that we are going to want to attack PSG. And then uh, in Group C, G2, EG, and Order. Um, two of these teams are going to make it through. I think it's going to be EG and G2. And like I said, I got I got money on uh, EG to win that. So let's talk about the rest of the numbers for MSI. So at MSI, six teams. We have, we have three groups, 11 teams, three groups, four teams, four teams, three teams. Two teams make it out of the group stage and qualify for the Rumble. And then out of those six teams, four advance to the knockout round, which is just semifinals and finals. So if if you qualify for Rumble and out of the six teams that qualify for Rumble, if you took four random teams, then every team would have a 67% chance to make it into the knockout stage. Um, and the reason why that's important is because the way that I'm looking at it is a team's chance to win the tournament is equal to their chance to get out of their group times their chance to qualify for the knockout times their chance to win semis times their chance to win the finals. And when I was just plugging numbers in, um, I did for a team like T1, you would say they are going to make it out of their group 100% of the time. So you put a one. They're going to make it out of Rumble and into the semifinals 100% of the time. So you put a one. In their matchup, in order to get to their 64%, that that is the implied uh, probability of them winning the tournament, you would need to say that they are 80% chance, they're, they're, um, they are going to win their semifinal matchup 80% of their time and the finals 80% of the time. And that's just not the case. That's not what their odds are going to be. Um, and it's not what their odds should be. So to kind of showcase that a little bit closer, um, what do you think the odds would be for T1 against RNG in a, in a one best of five? In one best of five, I think that, you know, it'd probably be closer to 0.6 or 0.65. if Because we're most likely going to have T1 looking dominant, RNG looking dominant when they play each other. Um, so... I think that the line would be probably like closer to an implied probability of 60-40, maybe even 65-35. So if you wanted to change it to times 0.65, then fine. But but it's going to do a lot to negatively impact the the overall percentage. So you could do something like this where you just change it to 0.65. Now you're at 52% chance. And then that's with them. Like if you just want to reverse this, do 0.8 and then times 0.65 where this is like EG or G2, and this is RNG. So even if we said T1 is one gets out of their group 100% of the time, qualifies for the knockouts 100% of the time, the chance of them beating EG or G2 around 80%, maybe even if you said 90%, and then their chance to beat RNG, even if you said, I guess 0.65. Then you're at 59%. So then that's a negative 5% uh, negative five percent edge over the sports book. So the sports book is making you, is offering you odds that is most likely going to make them money. Because um, that's just how the sports book, you know, makes money over time. Um, so I think I'm going to end the video here. Actually, before I end the video, let's talk about the tier list. Um, so this is what the tier list would look like according to the sports book. 
Um, I think that it's. I think that it's probably more like this. I don't think that PSG is on the same level as these four teams. I think that EG is closer to RNG than they are to G2. Um, and that might be like just crazy or wrong. Um, but, you know, I've already put my money where my mouth is. I, I think that being able to bet $100 on Evil Geniuses at plus 4,000 was just too good to pass up. So that's basically it. I I want Evil Geniuses to win um, MSI. I know that it's unlikely that it's going to happen, but it's still going to be a fun ride to get there. In future videos, I'm probably going to um, break this down with some other people um, and talk about individual matchups and like the math behind some of these matchups um, and like really dive deeper. This is more just a first look, but it's setting the setting the stage for future videos on MSI. Um, and you know, hopefully we can repeat our performance from worlds. Um, that'd be nice. So that's all I've got for you today. Thanks for watching and I'll talk to you later.